in the members only section this is secrets of a market maker if you guys have any questions throughout the presentation feel free to ask any questions i'm here to answer questions if you have any questions about any uh gamma scalping i know there's a lot of questions we're going to talk about that in the workshop um you know trading how a market maker trades how they make money any questions whatsoever just let me know and i'll be feel free to answer these questions as you guys all probably know, my name is Andrew Keen. Uh, I was a market maker on the floor of Chicago Board Options Exchange. Simple and easy. Graduated from University of Illinois Champaign-Urbana, fighting Illini. I had a finance degree and an accounting minor. I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. Absolutely none. I did a bunch of you know interviews for financial analyst roles, and I realized that was not a fit for me. My dad told me, hey, maybe you should trade. Every day is different. You get bored really easily. You'll enjoy it. Sure. So I got a job to be a market maker out of school. And basically the way it worked was I got a job and this happened on 9-11, uh, basically 9-11, 2011. And then basically what happened was uh, they put, they rolled a bunch of market makers back to, um, we'll kind of talk about the market, market maker move as well. Um, so they rolled a bunch of traders back until March. So I had to do something from September 2001 to March, so I got a job as a financial analyst at Caremark CVS for six months. Absolutely hated it. It was miserable. I was reading balance sheets, income statements. I said, do I really have to do this for the next 30 years of my life? Um, I was it, was, it was terrible, basically. So my old company um, calls me up. They say, hey, Andrew, your job, do you still want it? We're paying you $2,000 a month, and we'll give you $2,000 since you stayed. So six months, after when I was initially supposed to start, I actually started. I started as a clerk making $2,000 a month. I took the 540 train every morning to Chicago from Deerfield, Illinois, about a 40 minute train ride. Got there, uh, walked over, the first guy in the office at 645. So I took the 540 train and every single morning as a clerk, $2,000 a month. It was a nine month to one year program. During that, during the uh, days, uh, we had class every single day. We had a test once a week, um, and we had mock trading after the close. The only thing about mock trading, we only had mock trading when the traders decided that they didn't want to gamble. No joke. There was actually a guy who ran, ran quote-unquote house, and it, we, they rolled dice. They played blackjack, um, I think craps a little bit too. Um, so they were just always gambling. It was pretty sick. Uh, the first day, this will be recorded, yes. First day I ever came into the office, okay? Guy's watching porn on his computer. We'll make it less graphic. Guy's watching porn on his computer. They're like, oh man, here comes Corey. I go, who's Corey? He's like, he's one of the partners. Walks over, he goes, hey, what you guys watching? Oh, looks pretty good. This is the kind of place I wanted to be at, okay? I'm not a corporate kind of guy. I don't fit in with, you know, uh, rules. I don't fit in with proper uh, etiquette at that time. I was 22 years old. Um, you know, I wanted to be around these guys. These guys were awesome. It's like a fraternity house. There were a hundred traders. The name of our firm was B-O-T-T-A, Boda Capital Management. B-O-T-T-A, what does Boda mean? Well, I'll tell you exactly what it means. Best option traders there are. B-O-T-T-A, best option traders there are. Talk about a bunch of cocky guys. And they were, but these guys were the best. We were the best trading firm on the floor. Um, we had a hundred plus traders. Our trading program was second to none. We were amazing, okay? Every single day after the close, when they didn't want to gamble, we talked about, we did mock trading, okay? They would just throw this stuff out at you. Oh, the dividend just changed from 25 to 20. What happens to the price of the calls? Oh, some guy comes in and sells 1,000 stratos. How does that affect the other pricing models, okay? So they just throw this stuff at you like over and over and over. Um, when I was clerking one summer, I stayed with my buddy and his dad's place in the city. Um, I was sleeping on a blow-up bed for a summer, and every single night, Andrew, let's go out. Andrew, let's go out. I'm 22 years old. I'm just graduating college. He was a senior in college. Let's go out. Let's go out. Every single night, dude, I got to study. I got to study. I got to study. I have to make it, okay? I need to make it. I was so dedicated on making it as a trader. There was nothing that was going to stop me. Um, I started trading for Boda. I made money. I got through the program in about nine months. Uh, 14 clerks that were trying to trade, only three of us made it through the program, okay? Trading is not for everybody. You either get it or you don't. 
there is no ifs, ands, or buts. This isn't a relationship. You can't fake it. You either get trading or you don't. Okay. If you have a bad day, and I am personally down about forty thousand dollars in the last two days from my top tick. As you guys mostly know, I started with a two hundred twenty thousand dollar account this year. Uh, two hundred twenty thousand. I built it up to five hundred forty thousand. Okay. In less than three months, two hundred twenty to five hundred forty thousand in two and a half months, about six ten weeks. In the last last two days, I'm down a lot off the highest point, but I'm still up a ton. Okay. Why 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 can I get mad and upset? Right. I had five hundred forty in my account. Right now, I think I have around four ninety five. I started with 220, okay? Every day is not gonna be a winner. Sometimes I trade bad, you know, I trade poorly. Maybe I didn't sleep, maybe I'm tired, maybe I'm not seeing the angles, maybe I'm reading the charts bad, maybe I'm getting stubborn, right? Mo most of trading is actually psychology, right? And if you're down money in a day, people think differently, okay? And I always say this on every single webinar, 90% of all traders actually lose money, right? 90%, yeah, forcing trades. You know, forcing trades is a huge thing. So 90% of all traders lose money. So get back to the story. Uh, we had a kid in, that went to Harvard in our trading class. He didn't get it, okay? You cannot fake trading, guys. You either get it and you're good at it or you're not, okay? So I started trading on the floor. Every single year was better than the year before. I started with a, I think I was making uh, $3,000 a month and a discretionary bonus. Discretionary means they get to screw you. You make them a bunch of money and they screw you. So $3,000 a month plus a discretionary bonus. Thanks for the discretionary bonus. Then I moved up to 4,000, 5,000. I think eventually when I left Boda, it was $7,000. When I left Boda, the best options firm there is, right? The best option traders around, they blew out, okay? The the owner of the firm, uh, had he owned 40% of it. He was offered something crazy like $80 million for the firm. He said no. The firm went to absolutely zero. I was one of the last three traders at the firm. I had $200,000 in my account. I was gonna leave, take half my money, he keeps half. I was gonna take 100,000, go to the next firm. He wouldn't let me leave. So basically, more of the story, I kept losing money and then basically went to zero and then I left. When I left, two, uh, one of the partners at Boda came to me and said, Andrew, we know how good of a trader you are. We wanna back you personally. So then I was backed by the new, uh, actually he's the CEO of the CBOE. If that's not confidence, I don't know what is, okay? I was personally backed by the CEO of the CBOE. He wasn't the CEO at the time, Ed Tilly, okay? He backed me with another guy who trades in my office. Um, yeah, my account at Boda went to zero. Basically they had a list of debtors that they needed to pay. And as a trader, I was lowest on the totem pole. <laughs> so they had to pay software, they had to pay, you know, seat lease, they had to pay everybody before me. So I got screwed. That's how some trading firms work, okay? So the CEO of the CBO backed me personally, and then when he got a position uh, very high level at the CBOE, he couldn't back me anymore. I traded on the floor as long as I could, guys. I wanted to never leave the floor. The floor was amazing. Let me tell you a little story. 2008, I was making money hand over fist. 2007, I was making money hand over fist. I mean, I would just walk home. I'd have a crinkle check of like $100,000, like almost every every month, okay? Floor was unbelievable. In 2008, uh, I didn't understand. I was young. I was 2008, so I was uh, six years ago. I was 28 years old. I, was, I almost bought a house in Chicago. I was $1.875 million bid for a house. That would have been the downfall of my life, and it would have been terrible. Probably cost four hundred thousand to furnish it. I almost bought a two million dollar house in Chicago, six thousand square feet for me and my girlfriend. What do I need six thousand square feet for? Okay. Thankfully, it didn't happen. I was on the floor as long as I could. I was one of the last guys in the Apple pit. From two thousand six to two thousand nine, I was the largest independent Apple trader in the world. Okay. When they came in at Apple, I was the biggest size. Yeah, Apple was eighty bucks, but I was the biggest trader in the Apple pit. When I was trading on the floor, I would probably trade 5,000 contracts a day and 50,000 shares of stock, okay? So I was in the market maker, and why did I leave? This is the best time in history to be a retail trader. This is the worst time ever to be a market maker. Why do you say that? I compare option trading to so many different things, and one of them is a currency exchange, okay? You go to a currency exchange, 
you have dollars, you want euros. You have euros, you want dollars. They convert your money and they make the spread in between. The spreads are insanely tight right now. Very liquid in weekly options. What means it's good for a retail trader, terrible, absolutely horrible for a market maker. So I left the trading floor. I came upstairs, started trading upstairs, and I noticed a couple of things. There was a learning curve, okay? I didn't just start killing it, okay? For me to trade on a computer with seven monitors and two computers is way different than trading in the pits. Everything upstairs is a risk versus reward setup, okay? On the trading floor, I didn't care. I was just trading, man. My partner in my firm called me in my office one day. He said, hey, dude, what's going on with Pepsi? I go, what do you mean what's going on with Pepsi? He goes, Pepsi goes down in half. You lose one and a half million dollars. You're out of business. I started laughing at him. I go, I'm not gonna lose. Pepsi's not going to go down in half. What are you talking about? You know, you have to learn. You have to evolve in trading. Every single trade I take now is a risk versus reward setup. As a market maker, it wasn't like that. But I'm going to teach you guys the secrets of a market maker. Okay, these are very, very important. I guarantee you at the workshop, you will save yourself thousands of dollars by learning these secrets. Okay, um, I've taught thousands of students to full time traders. Currently, um, we have over 700 members, uh, subscribers, we call them. We have 700 subscribers for Keen on the Market right now. Um, the trading room is going great. Uh, the trade alerts is going great as well. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen me on CNBC, CBOE, Bloomberg, Fox Business, Sky Australia, BNN, et cetera, et cetera. So those are kind of some war stories about the trading floor. I mean, I could go on for hours and hours, but I'm here to give you guys value added. And I want to show you guys this value added because I think it's pretty cool. So this is the best time ever to trade options, okay? If you are unsuccessful trading options currently, if you don't have that much experience, it's fine. But if you're currently not being able to make money trading options, it's not for you. Don't feel bad. It's not for everybody. But this is the best time ever for a retail trader to trade options. Three simple, easy reasons. Number one, the markets are tighter than ever. I want to get in a Twitter trade. I want to get in a Facebook trade. I want to get an Apple. One penny wide. Are you kidding me? How do people make money? Okay. Market maker, everything was 20 cents wide. You can pick your side, but I'm going to be 20 cents wide. And I'll show you guys how market makers actually make money. Okay. So the markets are insanely tight now, which is good for someone who wants to trade. We have penny wide markets. Back on the floor, you want to trade with me? 10 cents wide, 20 cents wide. Back in old school, I, would, I watch a lot of old school DVDs, right? Old school option education DVDs, the markets are a dollar wide. So you actually needed the stock to move like five bucks just to break even. I don't know if you guys have seen any McMillan DVDs back from the day, but like you really needed stock to move a huge amount just to break even. It was pretty crazy. Okay, so this is the best time ever. Everybody that's at this presentation should thank themselves that this is the best time ever. I'm assuming, does anybody, anybody at this presentation was ever a market maker? Was anybody ever a market maker on the floor? We might have a couple. Anybody a market maker on the floor? So this is the best time for you guys. We got a couple in here. Yes, we got one at least. So this is the best time for you. I wish I was still a market maker, guys. Being a market maker was awesome. I was slinging 5,000 options a day. I was trading, you know, 50,000 shares of stock. I didn't care if I was down 10 grand in one stock because I'd be up 20 in another stock. I didn't care if I was down 20 in one stock because I would be up 30 in another stock. In 2007 and 2008, my average P&L swings were thirty dollars to $40,000 a day. There would be weeks when I'd make or lose $100,000. It was crazy. I mean, it was like I mean, everything on the, you know, everything in the movies and more. I mean, it was really, really great, really, really fun. But, you know, the way the technology is, you got to move on or you get left behind. So I moved on and now I've become a retail trader. So this is the best time ever. And it's liquid. It is liquid, guys. Facebook, 800 up, 1,000 up. You can get in and out of positions as quick and easy as possible. It wasn't, our office wasn't even close to the Wolf of Wall Street. I didn't really see many guys doing drugs or you know having prostitutes and stuff. But man, the floor was fun. It was definitely a really good time. 
Okay, there are 8,700 stocks that are publicly traded. Of those 8,700 stocks, 4,200 of the stocks have options. Of the 4,200 stocks with options, oh, we have weekly stocks with options now. About 320. They're probably a little about maybe around 350 now. Okay, so a lot of opportunity. Okay, as you guys know, I watch a proprietary uh, scanner that shows me every trade across every exchange. I follow institutional order flow. There isn't a day that goes by where I don't take at least one entry, right? There's always opportunity. When I was on the trading floor and I was in the pit, we had 125 stocks in our name, in our pit, right? If there was something going on in another pit, some traders would go rush over there to trade it, but you're stuck with just the, the stocks in your pit, okay? 125 on average. And I would normally trade every single one of them, okay? So 125 different stocks. Now that I moved upstairs, hey, guess what? I get to trade 4,000 stocks. That's awesome to me. That means more opportunity. That means I can make more money. On the floor, 125, that's all I get. That's what it, how, many pit, how many stocks were in every pit. Upstairs, I can trade 4,000 stocks, okay? So it makes the opportunity so much greater. Volatility creates opportunity, okay? The better, you know, I have so many chances to make money. If I can't get, make money, then I get left behind. The CBOE lists weekly options on indexes, stocks, and ETFs. CBOE publishes a list of assets with weekly options. Gives traders more expirations. Yes, this will be recorded. Uh, we'll give you more expirations instead of just 12. So we used to have 12 expirations. If you want to trade, you have to trade here. Now, you can trade every single week. Okay. If you want to trade Apple credit spreads, you can trade Apple credit spreads every single week. Okay, opportunity create volatility creates op, op, volatility creates opportunity. More products means more chances. Okay, if I was upstairs and I only got to look at 125 different stocks, I would be bored. I wouldn't be able to trade that much. If you think about it and say um, there's 4,200 stocks and maybe on average I take six new trades a day, right? That means I'm taking one new trade per 700 stocks on the trading floor. That means I wouldn't take any trades. Okay. When I was on the trading floor, my seat lease was $8,000 a month, $8,000 a month. Now upstairs, the trading room's a couple hundred bucks. You get maybe the scanner if you want it. You pay rent, internet. You're all in for 800 bucks. You're all in at 18,000 at the NYMEX. Wow. I paid $8,000, okay? So, you know, something that you pay you know, you're you're getting everything for a fraction of the cost. I mean, if you can't cover 800 bucks worth of commission, you know, $800 worth of expenses, I had to clear 100 grand on the trading floor before commissions, before payment for order flow, before anything else, okay? This just shows you guys that coming upstairs is the real deal. This is, if you guys get a trade and if you have the opportunity right now to trade for a living, Regardless, if you had a bad day today, last week, this month, you should thank market makers and the exchanges the fact that you get that opportunity. Because back when I was a market maker, no one would have a setup with six monitors trading off the floor. You wanted to trade, you'd be on the floor, you have to pay the exchange a hundred grand a month to trade. So you guys have a great opportunity to be trading off the floor. So let's talk about what a market maker is. And they always say when you give a definition, you should never put the definition, actually, what is it? You're not supposed to put the words of the, what you're defining in the definition. So a market maker is someone who is willing, always willing, okay? Always willing to give a bid ass spread for a given option contract. The market maker will take either side of the trade and is hoping to be profitable, whether they just buy it on the bid, sell it on the offer, okay? If you guys wanna think of anything, the easiest thing to think of is, well, a pawn shop's actually not bad, but a currency exchange, okay? A currency exchange is a great thing. You go in a currency exchange, it doesn't matter what denominations you have, the currency exchange will take it from you and convert it to a different form. They might, and everybody knows currency exchanges are ripoffs, right? You get off the plane in Paris, you have US dollars, you want euros, the exchange will take that side. 
If you have euros, you want to make it U.S. dollars, they will take that side. So a market maker is a person that makes a market. I am no longer a market maker. I am a market taker. I take the market. I see ConAgra calls being bought. I buy them from the market maker. Back in the day, I used to be the market maker. Now I'm the market taker. In actuality, I think market taking is a lot more fun. Okay? I think market taking is a lot more fun. Let's look at an example here. Apple is trading $530. You say, someone comes in, how are the Apple 550 calls? The market maker will say, I'm 25 bid at 2530, 20 up. What does that mean? I will buy this option based on my Black Shoals model. I will buy 20 of them for $25. I will buy 20 of them, 25, uh, 20 of them for $25. I will sell them at 2530. So I will buy them at 25. I'll sell them at 2530. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? Okay, and I'll be 20 up on this option. It means I'd buy 20 or sell 20. You know, you could tweak your size however you want. If you you know thought Apple was going to go up and you wanted to buy these as a market maker, you could be 100 by 10. You could be 10 by 30, right? You can tweak your bid and offer size. It doesn't have to be the same all the time. So when they came in the pit, the broker would say, hey, guys, how's everybody going? Yeah, how are the Apple D's 550 calls? And we would say 25 bid at 2530. Then the broker would say, I'll buy 100 at 2530. Boom, we would sell them. The first thing I would do when I sell a call is I'd properly hedge myself as a market maker. What is a proper hedge? I buy stock on a short call position. Okay. So as a market maker, we are not trying to figure out direction. A market maker, and if you guys want to write this down, you should write this down. A market maker in general should never care about the direction of where the stock goes. A market maker wants to make money on implied volatility, number one. Number two, on theta or time decay. And number three, on the bid ask spread. Okay, write that down again, guys. You guys are, none of you guys upstairs are market makers, I don't think. I don't think anybody here is a market maker now, okay? Market makers make money three ways. On implied volatility, means they try to buy volatility when it's cheap and sell it when it's more expensive. No one upstairs is doing that. I'm currently not doing that, okay? That is high level of sophistication. Number two, time decay. What does that mean? I'm sure most of you guys have seen me trade. All I do is buy options, right? The market maker is then selling me those options, okay? Just like an insurance company is selling me car insurance. Every single day that goes by where I don't get in a car accident, the insurance company makes money off me, right? If I pay, let's say, 150 bucks a month for car insurance, that's could be equated to $5 a day. Every single day, I don't get in an accident, the car insurance company makes money for me. So the market maker, in general, likes to sell options, okay? Knowing that, in general, most options lose money, okay? Because of time decay and implied volatility. And the third way a market maker makes money is the bid-ask spread. And I'm telling you right now, the market maker wants more customers, okay? Just like a currency exchange. The market maker wants every single one of you traders to make money. That is a fact. Because the more people that make money, the more people that come back, right? Simple and easy. If you're trading upstairs and you don't make money, you're not coming back. The market maker relies on customers and as a trader upstairs we are a customer let's say that these calls okay are 25 bid at 2530 you'd buy them for 25 you'd sell them for 2530 you'd be 20 up in theory the best way the market maker makes money there's two brokers in the back of the pit and the first broker goes i have the apple these 550 calls how are they 25 at 25, 30, 20 up. 
He goes, I'll sell you them for $25. I go buy 20 of them. Then the next broker comes into the pit. He goes, how are the Apple 550 calls? I will pay $25.30. Boom. I just bought it and I sold it instantaneously. It doesn't happen like that very often. If I can make $0.30 cents on a 20 lot, $0.30 cents on a 20 lot, seems like nothing. That's not any money. 600 bucks. Boom, just like that. And there's so many times on the floor that this stuff happened, okay? Where I'd buy it cheaper, sell it more expensive. Let's look at the example of the currency exchange. I walk into the currency exchange. I go, hi, I have $100 worth of, I have $100. I want euros. He goes, here, here's 130 euros. Next guy comes in and goes, hi, I have 150 euros. How much US dollar? He goes, here, I'll give you 100 bucks. Boom, they just made money on the spread. That's simple. That's easy, okay? So stop thinking that the market maker is out to get you. He's not. He actually wants you to make money because if you make money, you come back as a repeat customer and they rely on customers over and over again. So why is a market maker both a buyer or a seller? You know, you think about, you know, someone like I think about the flea market. They're just there to sell stuff. You go to a grocery store. You can't go into the grocery store and be like, hey, I got a pint of strawberries. I want to sell you, right? Why would the market maker be a buyer and a seller? That doesn't make sense. Currency exchange, guys, simple and easy. At a currency exchange at the airport, you will always see them displaying two prices, where they buy it, where they'd sell it. In theory, for a market maker, all they would want to do, buy on the bid, sell an offer over and over again buying the bid sell an offer the more people that come in the better chance they have actually of doing this there's so many different opinions someone wants to get short apple someone's good long apple right for them to make money they need these customers how does a market maker make money let's revisit the example of apple a market maker in general does not care about the direction of where the stock goes, okay? Because they are quote unquote always properly hedged. Let's look at the example of the DEES 550 calls, 25 bid at 2530. In theory, an ideal world, the market maker would like to buy 20 of these options for 25 and then sell them at 2530. If he can do this 20 times, 600 bucks within seconds and there are so many times on the floor where i print 600 bucks thousand bucks yeah, 1500 bucks i can do that six times in a day right the day that microsoft came out and said they were buying yahoo or uh yeah buying yahoo my uh backer called me at 5 30 in the morning he goes uh microsoft just put out a 32 hour bill for yahoo i go oh no how does my position look he goes you're probably down about forty eight thousand dollars." Oh man. Well, what am I going to do? I went into work that day and I traded like a machine that I am. I made $52,000 trading. Just, I, I can't think about the 48 I lost. I need to trade. I need to be clear. Stop looking at your PL. Like, we would have this, we would have a computer program called Micro, Micro Hedge that would constantly show me my PL over and over and over again. And it was brutal on the opening bell when I'm down $48,000. And there's two PLs on there there was day trading and there was position. And then you could add them up into one. So the last thing I want to do is sit there and go, oh my God, I'm down 48,000. I can't trade. I can't trade. Okay. Okay. So you guys got to get out of that mindset of if you're having a bad day, you got to be on the ball, always ready to go. So the market maker also benefits from wider markets. The wider the market, the easier it is they, they can make money. It gives him more edge and allows for greater profit. Think of profit margin. Okay. If you buy it at 25 and sell it at 25.30, that's 30 cent of profit margin. If you can buy it for a buck and sell it at five bucks, that's a huge profit margin. The tighter the markets, the less profit margin they have, okay? Does anybody have any questions so far? Upstairs just means I'm not on the trading floor. I trade upstairs means I'm not on the floor. Floor is considered downstairs. I trade upstairs, consider not on the trading floor. Simple and easy, okay? 20 up means I'll buy 20 or I'll sell 20. Up, either way. 20 up, either way. 
you could say 100 by 10. I'm 100 on the bid, 10 on the offer. Say I'm 20 up, 20 either way, 20 around. Okay, why is it the best time ever to be a retail trader? When I was on the trading floor, I was the biggest independent trader in the Apple pit. I wish I could be down there. But we talked about this. Tighter markets, anybody with an internet connection or a smartphone can trade complex order strategies with one click of the button. I always say you can go from long to short, short to flat, and flat to long within seconds. When there's usually unusual option activity and 10,000 calls are bought, do you really think buy that much stock to hedge it? Well, depending on my position, but absolutely. I wouldn't personally sell 10,000 calls. Maybe I'd sell a thousand, I would sell 500 calls. First thing I do, the first thing I do would be to go do stock immediately. That's my proper hedge. So this is the best time for all of you to make money trading, and I'll teach you the skills you need to get there from a market maker. So believe it or not, okay, I don't care what anybody's ever told you. The market maker actually wants you to make money. Remember that the market maker simply wants a high volume of transactions. More customers, better chance he can buy in the bid and sell an offer. Less customers, the lower chance, okay? And you know, when I was trading, Apple would be 20 cents wide. If they came in some stock I've never heard of, I don't know, I've never heard of this stock. So I'd be very, very wide. So the tighter the markets is the more customers. Think about it logically. Twitter, Facebook, Apple, Tesla, the markets are very tight because there's a lot of customers. The markets that are wider are maybe a stock like uh, EEFT because there's less people trading that stock. Simple and easy. The market maker simply wants a high volume of transactions. The first thing a market does after taking on a position is to hedge themselves. 100% the first thing I would ever do would be if I sold calls, I bought stock. If I bought puts, I bought stock. If I sold, if I bought calls, I sold stock. If I uh, sold puts, I sold stock. Instantaneously, I used to stand in the mirror every single day and repeat these back. They're like, "Oh, buy you calls, sold, buy 10,000 shares of stock." And this is all we would do in mock trading. As a market maker, the best way to hedge yourself is stock. Stock is very liquid and it's only one penny wide. Options are tighter. Okay. So I would always hedge myself. And we always talk about unusual option activity, okay? And let me tell you, this is how I created unusual option activity, okay? The Nigerians do it great. I do it great as well. And I'm going to tell you why. Simple and easy. We had a trader that came into the pit, a broker, okay? Came into the pit once a week for a year and a half. And he would sell put spreads in Apple. Let me repeat that. He would sell put spreads in Apple. $10 put spreads, three bucks. $20 put spreads, six bucks. What does that mean? Number one, he was selling implied volatility. Number two, okay, he would be getting long. Okay? As a market maker, I say the first thing I always do is hedge my position, correct? Well, if you know someone's really smart and they're going to get long, sometimes you're going to do the exact same thing. You're going to get long with them, okay? Some market makers are 100% delta neutral all the time. I didn't personally trade like that. If I knew a trader knew what they were doing, okay, I would go on the same side as them. Oh, here comes here goes here comes the the Merrill broker. He's gonna go sell us more Apple put spreads. Time to get long again, right? Why would I be delta neutral if I don't? Some people didn't play that game. Some people wanted to be delta neutral all the time, which means they're always sitting there and they're always hedging themselves properly. Okay, I didn't hedge myself properly. I would quote unquote over hedge myself. They sold me put spreads, I would get extra long, which means I'd buy more stock. If they sold us calls, depending on what it was, okay, you have to know if a trader has a stock position on, but as a market maker, I wasn't a delta neutral guy. I knew which orders were good and which were orders weren't good. And you know, the transition upstairs took me time, but you know, I took my account this year. My, I've taken my account from 220,000 to 500,000 because I know which orders are good. I know which orders they don't have a stock position on most of the time, and I know which ones they do, okay? A market maker, I was a different breed of a market maker, okay? I wasn't the normal guy on the floor that needed to be delta neutral. I would sling them because after time, 
You got so good at this game, okay? It's just a game. It's a puzzle. You put all the pieces together and you figure it out. It's simple and it's easy. So let's look at an example on the next slide of a trade in Apple options and break down how the market maker actually makes money. Okay, they're going to make money on this trade. I'm going to show you how. So let's say here, simple and easy. Simple and easy here. I was a market maker. I sell 20 of the Apple 550 calls for 2530 while the stock was trading $530. I would then hedge myself on whatever the delta was, okay? If I sell calls, that means I'm getting short. To hedge myself, like protons and neutrons, to hedge myself, I need to do something to get long, okay? So, simple and easy. If I sold 20 of the Apple 550 calls, let's say there are 50 delta. 50 delta, 20 lot. Technically, I'd be short a thousand deltas. To properly hedge myself, I would go buy 1,000 shares of stock as fast as I could. And when I say I didn't trade delta neutral, I traded delta neutral for 90% of my trades. It was the big orders of the guys that I knew constantly came in that I would go and, you know, get a little long. Some random guy comes in my pit, buys 20 of the Apple, these 550 calls from me for 2530. I don't know him from Adam. I'm just going to hedge myself to Delta neutral. Okay. Simple and easy. When you guys get as good as you get, I know there's certain things. Um, I know there's certain things that sometimes I will then basically get longer, right? Because I've, I know there's certain stocks in my head, even trading nowadays that I will strap it on because this guy this guy's really good he knows what he's doing he's really good at this okay but an average guy delta neutral so i sell 20 of the apple 550 calls for 2530 i then go buy a thousand shares at the market let's say i got filled at 530 dollars okay so as a market maker i'm short 20 calls and then i buy a thousand shares of stock Someone says, is there a threshold for unusual volume? I'd say like two to three times. The market maker sells the calls naked and they buy stock in the market to hedge. Absolutely. The market maker is always hedging themselves, always trying to hedge themselves, right? They're just trying to make money off the bid ass spread. Remember, we talked about three ways a market maker can make money implied volatility, uh, theta, and the bid ass spread. Okay. So I. So let's just say you guys buy 20 of these Apple calls for me for 2530. Okay. You bought 20 for me. I sold them to you. I sold 20 of the calls for 2530. I go buy 1000 shares of stock to properly hedge myself. Simple and easy. Let's say one month goes by and Apple has rallied five bucks. Okay. Apple's gone from 530 to 530, 535. And now these Apple 550 calls are trading 27 bucks. And you say to yourself, great, I bought 20 of them from AXK in the Apple pit for $25.30. I can go sell them to him now for $27, and I made money. He didn't make money. He sold them to me for $25.30. Well, that's actually wrong. I made money as well. Okay? I sold 20, I sold 20 of them for $25.30, and I bought 1,000 shares of stock. How, well, how did I make money? Okay, well, let's talk about this. There's two people on this trade. Think of yourself. You bought 20 calls for 25.30. A month goes by. They're worth 27. How much money did you make? You made a dollar 70 on a 20 lot, $3,400. How did the make market maker make money? And you say to yourself, he didn't make money. If he sold them at 25.30 and he bought them back for 27, he can't possibly make money. Let's go through the example here. So I'm a market maker. Ooh, that's the next one I said. Mm, that'd be really good if we had the slide. Okay, let's talk about this here. So I'm going to have to do the math in my head. Two examples, okay? The guy buys 20 calls for uh, $25.30. The next month, he sells them for $27. You, as the buyer of those options, make uh, $3,400, right? You make $1.70 
times the 20 lot. You make $1.70 times the 20 lot, which is $3,400. Let's look at me. Okay, how did I do? I sold 20 calls for $25.30. In a month, I have to buy them back for $27. I lost $3,400, right? However, look at what's going on, guys. I also bought 1,000 shares of stock. If the stock goes up $5 on my 1,000 shares, I actually made $5,000. So I made $5,000 and I lost um, $3,400. So I net profit of, profitable of $1,600. So it's possible for you and the market maker to both make money. Okay? Does everybody understand that? If you buy 20 calls, you sell them a month later, you make 3,400 bucks. I will lose 3,400 bucks, but I just made $5,000 on the stock that I bought. Okay, does everybody understand that? So someone says you're buying 1,000 shares. You're buying 1,000 shares, 30, 1,600, is that what I said? 1,600. So someone says you're buying 1,000 shares against 20 calls, why would you do that? As a market maker, I'm always hedging myself, quote unquote, Delta neutral, Delta neutral. If Apple goes down, you lost money and I could still make money. Remember guys, as a market maker, I'm making money on theta and implied volatility, okay? I can make money on implied volatility and theta. Well, no, if, okay, 20 calls controls uh, 2,000 shares of stock, correct? 20 calls control 2,000 shares of stock. So if I want to hedge myself delta neutral, I would buy half of it, okay? I would buy whatever the delta was. So 20 times a 50 delta would be 1,000. So I would buy 1,000 shares. So if the trader trades a million dollars of stock in the course of the year, what percentage would the market maker make on average? Market. I would do it on the floor. I would do the on the floor. I would do all the stock on the floor. You could electronically do it on the floor. Let's say another example, okay? Let's say that I buy a thousand shares of stock. You bought these calls for me for twenty-five thirty. Let's say Apple goes down five dollars, and let's say these calls go to twenty-three bucks. Okay, um, I have to do three. 20, that's right. So let's say these, stock, these calls go to 23 bucks in a month, okay? Apple goes down five bucks. You're gonna lose money because you pay 25, 30 and you're, they're worth 23, so you lose money. The market maker sold them for 25, 30. They buy them back for 23, which is $2.30. Oh, we'd have to say the stock goes down three bucks. Okay, I'm just trying to do an example in my head. Okay, let's say this, guys. You buy 20 of these calls for 25, 30. Apple goes down three dollars. Apple goes down three dollars to twenty-two thirty. Okay, you lose money as this, those calls go to twenty-three dollars. Okay, so you're gonna lose, you know, two dollars and thirty cents times the twenty lot. You're gonna lose forty-six hundred bucks. If I sell them for twenty-five thirty, and then I buy them back for twenty-three, I made forty-six hundred. If the stock goes down three dollars. I lose three thousand, so I'm going to still be net profitable for forty six hundred dollars. What I'm trying to get at and explain to you guys is the market maker most of the time doesn't care where the stock goes. Okay, they don't care where the stock goes because they're usually delta neutral. What I'm trying to tell you, the market maker is always going to make money on the bid ask spread, implied volatility, and theta, and you might not even realize it. Okay, because all you care about is what you paid and what you sell it for. It's just just a different way of thinking. So this is actually me on the trading floor. Uh, this is kind of setup that we'd have. Uh, that is, Craig actually sits in, uh, he's one of my backers. Uh, this is actually the only picture I could find of me on the trading floor. Uh, and it was just basically screens everywhere and stuff like that. Um, and uh, I traded on the floor for 10 years. I wish I could go back down there. And I will teach you guys the ways to now take money from the market maker. Okay, I've taught you how the market maker makes money. They make money in implied volatility, they make money on theta, and they make money on the bid-ass spread. Okay, I'm going to teach you guys the ways to take money from a market maker.
okay? And I show it every single day in the trading room, and you guys don't even know that I'm showing you all these tricks. So we're gonna show do this on a workshop. Here's my Apple example. I put in the slide at the wrong thing. So remember that in order for a market maker to keep making money, they need customers. The market maker actually wants the customer to make money and stay in the game as long as possible. There would be no market maker if there were no market takers, right? There would be no market makers if there's no market takers. The market maker isn't concerned about running your stops or squeezing you out of your position. They don't care about that. They don't care about the five lot in the book or the 20 lot here. You know, I'm trading you know, 5,000 options a day. I don't care about that three lot in the book, okay? They make more money in more ways on a and time decay, implied volatility, and bid ass spread. In our course, which we're gonna do live at the end of the month, I will teach you how to take money from the market makers. I've shown you how they make money. Now I'm gonna show you how you can take money from them. I will teach you these market maker tricks and how they can benefit you in any trading plan. I will show you who actually controls the order flow because I'll tell you what guys, the market maker doesn't control the order flow. The institutions do. The market maker is just there to delegate it, okay? They don't control the order flow. Why implied versus historical volatility matters for a retail trader but not a market maker. Stop looking at implied versus historical volatility, guys. If you're not a market maker, it shouldn't matter. Why Greeks matter for a market maker, but not a retail trader. Learn how to scalp gamma to lock in profits when option markets are closed. So I'm gonna teach you this. And I know a lot of people got mad at me, asked why, why I opened up like $13. I sent out a tweet. I was like, hey, I'm locking in profits here. And you say to yourself, the options aren't even open, Andrew. How can you be locking in profits? And I'm going to teach you this. I'm going to teach you guys how to learn the spread book and how to get filled at a better level every single time. Okay. Learn how to read bid and offer size so you never give up money you don't have to. This course will save you thousands of dollars in real money trading. And one of my favorite ones, free advertising. And I talk about this a lot in the trading room and putting your orders in so you can get filled better. So I wanna to talk to you guys about our course we have. It is a workshop, it will be live. It's how to take money from the market maker. I'm sure everybody knows that the money, market maker has been taking money from them for years. So this is how to get back at them, okay? The course will include to understand who controls order flow. The market maker is actually not the one who controls order flow. Institutions control order flow. So this will give you who controls order flow. You will learn how to guarantee yourself the best commission prices. One of the emails I get almost every single day is, is traders saying, hey, am I paying too much for commissions, okay? Everybody shops around, you know, they shop around a vacation, you shop around, um, hotel rooms, airfares, why not shop your brokerage run? And I'm gonna teach you guys the tools and skills you need to get the best commission rate possible. You will also learn how to gamma scalp. Equity options only trade from 8.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. The stock, however, is open from 5 a.m. to 8 p.m. So how can you take advantage of this? And I had a trade in SYY in December where I took advantage of this and I locked in $13,000 profits that I wouldn't an, able to get in other ways um, because the stock market was open longer than the option market. Spread book. Tips for getting filled in the spread book. If you guys trade spreads at all, this course is a must. If you are a beginner trader, option 101, if you trade one option a day or a thousand options a day, this course is a must. And we're offering it today for only $97. Also understand how to capture stock dividend, okay? Everybody knows if you're long stock, you get a dividend. If you are long calls, you do not get the dividend. So how can I lock, lock in 
the dividend, and there's a mathematical equation that I'm going to teach you. And this is what I'm going to be honest with you guys. When I was a market maker on the floor, this is one of the ways we took advantage of customers. We would do something called dividend spreads, and we would take advantage of the fact that the trader, that the uh, retail trader, did not exercise calls for dividends okay so i'm going to teach you guys the mathematical equations so you guys can start getting back at the market maker we only have 200 spots available at this price it is only 97 dollars. you can hit the link below or sign up on options on the floor.com forward slash profit or give us a call at 859-963-3445 couple things i'm going to say about this workshop number one this workshop will be live. It is not a recording. It will be live. Number two, if you cannot attend, we will give you the recording for free. Okay, so you'll get the recording within 48 hours. The course is going to be on uh, April 29th at 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time. So 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on April 29th. Only about 40% of the people uh, that pay for the workshop actually attend the course. So if you cannot make the course, no worries. Number Three, 100% money back guarantee. If you trade one option or you trade 100 options in a month or you trade 1,000 options or even 10,000 options a month, this course is a must for you. You will save money. I have 100% money back guarantee. If you do not save money off this course, I'll give you your refund for the course. So that's a no-brainer right there. Sign up for the course, and if you don't like it, just say, hey, Andrew. I want my money back. I didn't learn enough. To be honest, for the Ichimoku Cloud Workshop, I refunded three people out of about 500, okay? So this course, when I was writing, I was like, wow, this course is really good. I really like this course. I feel there's huge value added to any trading plan if you're interested in learning how to trade options or if you are currently trading options. And number five, we will sell out. We sell out of every single workshop we do. So this price is only guaranteed for you guys for a short period of time for that $97. If you want to go on the website, you can buy it for $197. But we're, we want to take, thank you for taking time out of your day on your busy Saturday. So we're going to give you it for $97. This is a no-brainer. This is a layup, as they call it in basketball. It will get the recording. It is going to be a, a money-back guarantee, and you guys will save yourself thousands of dollars from this course. And if you don't think you do, then I'll give you your money back from the course. This is Andrew Keen from KeenOnTheMarket.com. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you in the course next week. Make sure you sign up. We will sell out of this course. Thanks, guys.